You're listening to a Share Radio podcast. Let's move on now, because Jim Rickards is the chief global strategist at West Shore Group and a New York Times bestseller. His new book, The Road to Ruin, is the third volume of a projected quartet. Now, this book argues how the elites are planning the next financial crisis. Well, Jim joins us now. Very warm welcome to you, Jim. So, first of all, who are these elites and how are they linked to the international financial system? Well, it's a great question, and uh, whenever you mention the word elites or global elites in the subtitle of my book, people kind of conjure up some deep, dark conspiracy of figures in hooded robes sitting around some mahogany table, uh, it's almost like something from a James Bond film. But in fact, they're people that we know very well. It's uh, Christine Lagarde, the head of the IMF, uh, David Lipton, her first deputy managing director, Mario Draghi at the European Central Bank. Uh, it includes uh, professors like Larry Summers and Ken Rogoff at Harvard, uh, public intellectuals, uh, many in the UK, like Adair Turner and Anatole Kolesky. The point is, it's a group of central bankers, heads of multilateral institutes, uh, academics, public intellectuals who collectively run and also guide the international monetary system. So it's a very, very concrete, uh, identifiable group of individuals. And that's the, the group I focus on in my book, The Road to Ruin. So how do we wrest power away from them? How do we defeat them, Jim? Well, we we can sort of use uh, people's money, which is gold. I recommend investors hold uh, 10% gold, uh, 10% of their investable assets in gold. Put your home equity and business equity to one side. Don't uh, don't speculate with that. But what's left, their investable assets, put 10% in physical gold. These elites, these central bankers, hate gold because they control the paper money system. Uh, they're like any monopolist. If you had a monopoly on any product, it could be candy bars. In this case, it happens to be money. Uh, why would you want to uh, you know, have a kind word for the competition? But gold is a form of money. It's competition to paper money or central bank money. Uh, and investors can get out of the central bank system, protect them, their, themselves with an allocation of gold. Don't go all in. Don't go half in. I don't recommend that. I don't think that's prudent. But 10% is a really, really good insurance policy. Is the solution a cashless economy? Would that see the end and the downfall of the IMF and Christine Lagarde, etc.? No, the cashless society is their fondest wish, and here's why. Uh, because one of, what they basically want to do in various ways is to confiscate kind of the wealth of everyday working people. And there are a number of ways to do this. One is with negative interest rates. We already see them in Europe. We see them in Japan, Switzerland, elsewhere. Uh, they may be spreading. They haven't come to the United States or the U.K. yet, but there's certainly some research and talk about this in the United States. So let's say you and I each have 100,000 pounds. You have your 100,000 pounds in the bank. I have, I have mine in banknotes uh, put away in a safe place. If the elites impose negative interest rates, which they do want, and the reasons for that having to do with uh, getting to negative real rates, that is interest rates below the inflation, which is supposed to be a pride to going out and spending the money, separate subject, uh, you come back a year later with a 1% negative interest rate, you only have 99,000 uh, pounds. Uh, they've taken 1,000 pounds uh, away from you, but I still have my 100,000 pounds intact uh, because I was out of the system. So cash is, is a way to avoid negative interest rates. So in order to impose negative interest rates, they have to get rid of cash. So we see the, uh, the European Central Bank eliminating the 500-euro note. We hear calls from Larry Summers in the U.S. for elimination of the $100 bill. Ken Rogoff at Harvard would like to eliminate cash uh, uh, immediately. Of course, the most horrific example is in India, where the government uh, woke up one morning and Prime Minister Modi declared the most popular forms of cash to be illegal. He said, the money in your pocket is no longer legal tender. Uh, it's thrown the Indian economy into chaos. It's, uh, it's about an 80% cash society. Um, you know, fishermen can't buy fuel for their boats in the morning. They can't fish. There's no food on the table. Riots have broken out. Banks have been closed. So a lot of the things I, I talked about in my book, you know, I finished writing my book in September. It takes a month or so to get printed and boxed and shipped to the bookstores. Uh, I certainly expected these kinds of asset freezes and money rise to break out. I didn't expect they'd be breaking out the day the book was published, but that's exactly the case in India. Well, I hope that your book isn't out of date already, Mr. Rickards, but let's go back to these elites, because who are they working for? Are they working for the, the big corporations or just for personal or institutional gain? 
Uh, it's it's more the latter. Uh, as I say, it's not it's not a conspiracy, but there, it is coordinated in the sense these are like-minded individuals. If you have like-minded individuals, you don't actually need a conspiracy. No need to, again, hypothesize something that's actually fairly complicated and difficult to do. Look, they've all gone to the same schools, whether it's Oxford or Cambridge or Harvard or Yale, University of Chicago, Stanford. It's a very short list of schools. In many cases, they are each other's professors. Uh, Stanley Fisher, the vice chairman of uh, the U.S. Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, he's a little bit older than the rest. He was the Ph.D. thesis advisor to many others who are themselves heads of central banks around the world. They've all been taught the same things. They all believe the same things. So if you have a like-minded group of individuals, they don't need a lot of coordination. They just kind of activate. And, of course, they're self-perpetuating. We see important figures like um, Lael Brainerd, who's a member of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve in the U.S. Well, she's a protege of Robert Rubin, former U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, now head of the Council of Foreign Relations. Rubin's an older, more senior figure, but he did a good job in the 90s of bringing along people like Tim Geithner, Lael Brainer, Michael Froman, uh, David Lipton. Not all household names, but very important figures in this international monetary system I'm describing. So it's self-perpetuating, self-appointing, unelected, non-democratic, like-minded individuals who are, as they say, taking us down the road to ruin because they actually don't understand risk. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question because I, I read your hypothesis about the D-Day for the pound, March 31st, 2017. D-Day, I mean, how low can the pound go? It's already lost 15% since the end of June. Sure, but historically the pound has been subject to a repeated series of 30% declines. Um, Look at uh, 1931, uh, 1967, 1992, uh, again more recently after Brexit. So the history of the pound is just to keep falling against the dollar. It wasn't that long ago when it was, uh, you know, over four dollars to the pound, and now, <clears throat> pardon me, now it's about a dollar twenty-four. So uh, there's nothing unusual about a 30% devaluation of the pound. I see it going below par, perhaps as low as 90 cents, and that's simply because uh, with the cost of Brexit. Um, and, of course, the U.K. has no, uh, no material amount of gold relative to the size of its economy. It doesn't, and it's, you know, it's never, it was never in the Eurozone as part of the EU. It's now leaving, but never part of the Eurozone, never had access to the 10,000 tons of gold that the Europeans have. Uh, so there's really nothing supporting the pound except confidence. And uh, with interest rates low, there, there could be a few rate cuts, but with interest rates low uh, and Brexit looming, uh, they really have no sort of stimulus tools except cheapening the pound, which the, the UK government has done repeatedly. Thank you very much. Jim Rickards, author of The Road to Ruin. Thank you very much indeed.